And so my question was, can it fit? Can I do it every single day and make fresh bread loaves for my family without feeling like I was tied or chained to my sourdough schedule? I wear the chains I forged in life. And the answer I found was, yes, I can make sourdough fit. So I'm just gonna take you through the process. Welcome to the kitchen. I tried to shove everything unsightly out of sight and we are going to talk about sourdough. Now this is the process I do in a day. I'm Danielle Hogan, this is Hogan Life and we talk here about everything mom related. I have wanted to be part of this sourdough subculture for a long time. I want to see how sourdough making fits into my busy life, homeschooling, doing all my chores and being present in my children's life. And for a while it just seemed, when I would watch the videos, it just seemed like it was too time consuming. Oh, you made another one? The precision of timing was too much. Now, there are a couple reasons why bread making has just recently become really important. I've always been in and out of making homemade bread. So what has changed? One thing in particular is that my children are getting bigger and we go through so much bread. And I try to buy organic quality bread. So if at the very least we are eating a loaf of bread a day and there are seven days in a week, usually it's probably between four and five dollars a loaf. So with the size of my family, that could be $35 a week just for bread. I was finding I was getting possessive of the bread. Okay guys, don't touch the bread. It's for lunch, it's for sandwiches. No toast. You know I have seven kids, I have five boys and they eat a lot. And I want to have a fresh bread available for them all the time. I, that's just my desire. So that was one reason. And that was an easy fix. I just pulled out my ancient bread maker. And by ancient, I mean we got it for our wedding. And I started making loaves. This worked out. The second reason I really wanna make my own bread is ingredients. Even when you're getting wholesome bread, unless you're getting it fresh every day, they have preservatives, they have extra ingredients. And if you can sit at home and make bread that is four ingredients and then add whatever you want from there, that's just your basic bread, it's so much more wholesome for your kids, especially if they're eating the large quantities, which they are. Let me pull out my dough that has been sitting overnight. There are several things that need to go on in the morning. Now they are not super time consuming things, but they do have to happen. I'm trying to fit these in, in my morning routine, which means when I wake up, I'm gonna take out my dough that's been sitting overnight in the fridge, and I'm just gonna give it a bit of a shape and leave it on the counter. Hi! For the half an hour that I'm warming up the oven. I'm warming up the oven at 500. I'm sticking my Dutch oven inside to get nice and toasty. Now I usually let it warm up between 30 minutes and an hour. So that's pretty easy, right? You just get up, you turn on the oven, you take out your dough and you plop it on the counter before you stick it in the oven. I'm really loving making those little small loaves so I can make four in my Dutch oven. They're really a perfect size for putting in the toaster. This is yesterday's loaf. That's the first thing that needs to happen. The second is I need to start my loaf for tomorrow. All right, so let me get my starter. I don't have any wooden spoons, so I'm using this spork. So I fed this yesterday morning. So it's been about 24 hours. Right now I'm finding that my starter is activating very slowly because it's so cold in my kitchen. Let me get my scale. So now we are paying it forward into tomorrow and we are making our dough. I have my little scale, which did not cost me very much on Amazon. Listen, I have to tell you, I try to do everything with the tools that I have. I'm not gonna invest in a bunch of stuff if it's just a fad I'm going through. <laughs> it's just something I've always done in the kitchen. Everyone should have a little scale, so I did get one of these. So I just zero out my scale and I'm gonna use 100 grams of sourdough starter. Whoops, Daisy. Then I'm zeroing it out again, and I'm getting warm water. 325 grams of water. I'm zeroing it out again, and I'm putting in 475 grams of flour. Two teaspoons salt. Good quality Mediterranean sea salt. And I'm just gonna stir this up. Some sources will tell you not to mix the salt until later. And like I said, I am trying to find something that is the least burden on my time. And I find that if I do not mix the salt right away with my batter, 
it is much more likely that I will forget the salt entirely. So I'm just gonna give this a loose mix in together. You can also mix with your hands easily enough. Now when I first started, I was measuring everything to the tea and being really specific and I found. I still do a half a cup of flour to feed my starter, but then I just, I pour in some water because I want it to be a certain consistency, like a muffin batter. It's just a little thicker than I was getting with a, a, a solid one, one ratio of water to flour and I like it better. I've had some mind blowing moments in my sourdough journey and these are some of them. One, every sourdough loaf is different. That is wonderful to me because that means if I get a loaf that's a little off, it's not so much that I did something wrong, although I can always improve. We are dealing Dealing with a live culture. We are dealing with an environment that is not perfect and so it's okay. It's okay and it's better to start and try than not to start at all. I'm going to stick this back in my cupboard because that's where I keep it and I won't pull it back out until tomorrow. There's the timer for my first 20 minutes. Now I'm going to take the lid off my Dutch oven. I'm going to reduce the temperature to 450 and I'm going to continue baking for 15 minutes. I'll just show you. I stick a baking sheet underneath and that keeps it from getting too brown on the very bottom. In the beginning, all of these steps felt like a lot, but everything in my life, I've always endeavored to bring it down to a routine and to see after it has become a routine in my life, how hard is it then? It's like making my bed. How hard is it really to make my bed? Now that it is a routine, it's not hard at all. I barely even think about it. It's not a burden. And that is the challenge with sourdough. How can I get it to be part of the routine of my life, like I see other people doing, so that I always have fresh bread, fresh, delicious bread. It has great ingredients for my children. So let's talk about our dough. There's something that needs to happen to that dough, and it is the stretch and fold, and it needs to happen about three times, once every half hour. Now I say that loosely. For a while, I was extremely timely with my stretch and folds, and I would set a timer and make sure I did it every half an hour, and then I realized that's not not going to be the way that sourdough fits best in my life. I'm gonna to try to do it every half an hour because if I do it in the morning, I'm around, I'm in the kitchen, I'm making food, I'm teaching school, I can easily come and let me show you. Just gonna grab my dough. It's in the bowl, it's very runny and I'm just gonna pull it up and slop it over. Slop, I'm gonna pull it up and fold it over. Pull it up. You do this a quarter turn each time. I'm just gonna do it one more time. All right, and that's it. I'm gonna put the lid back on for another half an hour. So what if you can't get to it in half an hour? I'm gonna say that's okay. I've done it plenty of times where I've forgotten. Then I go back and do my stretch and folds. Now I'm still trying to get about three rounds of stretch and folds before I leave it for its large ferment bulk, which then I'm leaving the dough for the rest of the day. Before I go to bed, I'm gonna shape the loaf and I'm gonna put it in the fridge. And it's gonna be in the fridge overnight and then I'm gonna bake it in the morning. So my whole process takes about 24 hours. However, I'm really spending very little time with the dough. I'm going to my second stretch and fold. Easy peasy. And there they are, all done. When I'm baking the whole loaf from this recipe, I am putting it in for 30 minutes with the lid on the Dutch oven, and then I'm putting in a cooking sheet, taking the lid off and baking it for another 15 minutes, sometimes 20. You really have to work the timing of the bread to your oven and your environment, your elevation. My elevation is around 7,000 feet, so that's gonna be different than a lot of you. This is my final stretch and fold, and then I'm gonna leave it for the rest of the day. Let's take a minute and just recap what we've been going over. First, let me talk a little bit about a sourdough starter. Now, I got this sourdough starter from my father-in-law. If you know someone who has a starter, that is the best way to get started on sourdough. And you know what? They're everywhere, the sourdough people. Remember, my premise is fitting sourdough into my already busy mom life. When you're actively making sourdough bread, you can feed your starter every 12 hours. So I wake up and at any time in the morning, I am pulling out my dough that was made yesterday and I'm plopping it on the counter, I'm washing my bowl, and then I'm pulling out my sourdough starter so I can make my dough for today. So I pull out my starter, I make my dough, I refeed my starter, put it back away, and then I let the dough settle on the counter for a half an hour. I am then going to, every half an hour, do stretch and folds, pretty much four stretches and folds over. Quarter turn of the bowl every single time. Then I'm leaving that dough on the counter for a bulk ferment, and I'm gonna leave it on the counter all the way until sometime in the evening where I do a rough shaping of the dough and stick it in the fridge overnight. And that is
is it. I've come to the conclusion that I can fit sourdough into my everyday. And if you do not want to do sourdough every day, literally take your starter and stick it in the fridge. When you're ready to do sourdough, pull it out, feed it, and four to 12 hours later, make yourself some sourdough. Also, if you wanna make two loaves of bread, feed your sourdough starter extra so that you have enough for two separate doughs. But already, with the tools that I have, not sophisticated tools, I am making some sourdough that I love and that my kids and husband love. Thank you for joining me for my exploration of how to fit sourdough in my everyday life. I know that if sourdough is something that you would like to do, it is possible. I would love to see more of you. Please subscribe to my channel and enjoy everything mom related. Remember, no one can mom your kids like you.